Hi, I am Jacqueline Downey and I'm a community naturalist with Audubon Rockies. And today my daughter Avonlea and I are going to go look for mackerel invertebrates or little bugs that live in the water uh, here at the pond. So join us. All right, so to get started, all you really need is a bucket of some sort or a, a cup and a net. You can get these nets really anywhere. They're for fishes, fish tanks. Um, uh, you can get a little bit more fancy. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we're just going to get started right here with these tools. All right, so now is the part where we get to kind of just look and see what we collected. And I think kind of one of the neat things is that, you know, these all, all look like bugs, but we actually have a variety of different types of animals beyond mm -hmm. insects. So we do have some larvae. So that's just kind of a fancy word for the juvenile or the baby immature stages of insects. Got a bunch of those in here. We have some actual adult insects. We have, um, but we also have, right here we have um, some sort of snail. So they're in a mollusk. Okay, so they're not an insect. We have a fish down here, a little minnow. He's a fish, so not an insect. And then we have a variety of worms. It's fun to just sit here and watch these guys and watch how they have their different ways of moving. Um, these little guys that are moving around are scud. They're related to shrimp, and you can really see that. <laughs> um, and they all have their different ways of moving. You got a little water mite over here. You could see his little legs just moving as fast as they can. What about that red? That red. That's insect. a yep. That's a little worm. Sometimes they get really moving. Isn't that There's, a frog larva? Larva, or is that a dragonfly? That's a dragon or a damselfly larva. Okay. Yep, and. The frogs, you know, I haven't seen any of the tadpoles. Those are fun to watch. And we can also take a closer look at our snail friend here if we wanted to. With one of these really inexpensive, you can get these kind of insect viewers anywhere. This one's kind of neat because you can also add water to it if you want to. And get a good close look at it. Because if you're going to identify it, sometimes you need to know if it's got certain details on its body. Uh, we have a couple of different guides here. This one is created by the Biodiversity Institute. And so this one is, it's for streams, but it also has some details for if you're looking at a pond. You can also simply go and just print something off. This is one that we've printed off. It's got most pond um, macro invertebrates that you'll find. Um, and so I really enjoy using this one. It's simple and easy. Just there's a wide variety and there are so many online resources as well. If you want to kick it up a notch from there, you can also try and participate in some citizen science projects where you um, identify these, take some good pictures, um, and you can put them on something like iNaturalist and be part of a science community. That's a fun activity you can do. All right, now once you get a chance to take a look at all these cool critters, all these macro invertebrates, then we're going to return them right back to where the they came from. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get really lucky and catch a frog, like leopard, like this leopard frog in my hand, which, and then you, but you have to return them quickly. There you go. Bye-bye.